Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel. First of all, thank you to all of the subscribers and everyone who reaches out to me and wants to do business with me or donates to me or uses my Amazon affiliate, affiliate links or, you know, anybody who just uh, shoots the breeze or whatever. Thank you to everyone. So, welcome back to Security Saturday. This Security Saturday is going to be kind of quick. Um, it's raining. Uh, I wouldn't say biblical proportions, but it's raining a lot, so we're kind of keeping an eye on that. Uh, had a real late night last night. There was no Knowledge Nuggets again because we were at a Garth Brooks concert, which was fantastic, but didn't get home until oh, after 1 a.m. this morning, and, you know, uh, some of us aren't aging as gracefully as others. So, um, and just uh, Trish trying to get some things in order. Uh, the Monday uh, video you're going to see, we're going to announce a new website and a uh, new way to contact us and things like that. So let's go ahead and hop into our Security Saturday videos. And you'll notice that I'm coming to you kind of from a different venue. So the first thing I want to talk about tonight is uh, if you have Netflix, you've probably heard of uh, Orange is the New Black. And what has happened is that the latest uh, or the season five there was a hacker group that tried to hold Netflix uh, basically at ransom Netflix kinda probably just told them to take a walk I would imagine and uh, the show ended up released on the Pirate Bay uh, months ahead of its official June release so I will put a link to the Torrent Freak article about that. So check that out. That's pretty. It's pretty interesting that you know. So apparently they hacked uh, or got into the server somehow that was hosting this data, and they were able to extract it. And so I just thought that was pretty interesting. The uh, next thing I want to talk about is a lot of times you'll hear people talk about running Linux or running Mac and about how they don't have to worry about antivirus or they don't have to worry about uh, you know malware things like that but checkpoint uh, has an article and we'll link to this but apparently uh, there is some malware now for OSX that is in the wild and it actually intercepts secure communication from the user and it can even, I mean, apparently it can see passwords, it can see all kinds of information. So, if you've got a Mac, you know, Malwarebytes has a free version. Uh, Apple does a really good job of making sure that <clears throat> software um, has to go through the appropriate steps to be able to run, but that's where the kicker is with this. Apparently, apparently this software actually uses a legitimate uh, uh, yeah, it's a valid developer certificate, and it's authenticated by Apple. So that is a problem. Uh, so keep your eyes if you're a Mac user. You know, take a look at this. Make sure you uh, understand what's going on. And you know, traditional antivirus, in my opinion, <clears throat> is nothing more than a checkbox on a compliance list in 2017. Uh, programs like Malwarebytes address some of these problems much more efficiently, much more effectively, and I think we're heading down, you know, the whitelisting path. So I will uh, post a link to this. I thought this was really, really interesting, and maybe we can catch this thing in the wild and see what happens. The next story we're going to talk about tonight is the string bleed vulnerability that's out there. And it uh, takes advantage of a problem with SNMP and cable modems and allows an attacker to uh, basically obtain their credentials for the cable modem and then it is owned. So you can read this in depth and apparently, you know, this has been back and forth, back and forth about um, the problem and now the paper is out there. So I will link to this, um, see if your equipment is affected. The next thing we want to talk about tonight 
Yes, you see this article here on the screen. The FCC announces the plan to reverse Title II net neutrality. So what does that mean for us? Well, what Title II did in the first place was it made sure that ISPs treated all traffic equally, right? So Title II, what it's going to do is they'll no longer be apparently classified as a utility. We'll roll all this off. I don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. With all of these things that we're seeing undone at the FCC level, it's a real uh, tumultuous time right now uh, to be using the Internet, to be an ISP, or to have an ISP that you can't trust. Uh, someone like Comcast, you know, who has such a huge infrastructure, oh, this could be, uh, I don't know. I can't even speculate at this point, but this is something that everyone is going to want to keep their eyes on. Even if you're not in the U.S., you're probably going to want to keep your eyes on this. I will uh, post a link to this. The next thing, if you don't know about the Privacy Rights Clearinghouse, I'll put a link to this down in the description. And you can support them, donate to them. But one of the really nice things that they have, now they, uh, they do education and they'll, they'll uh, help people. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they've got one-to-one uh, -one assistance, educational publications, and advocating for consumer-friendly policy. Uh, but one of the things that they do is they actually have a data, a data breach uh, database. And there are 911 million records, almost a billion records. And you can come down here and you can actually search this database. So I love having a list of these databases that I can go to. Um, you know, somebody's like, hey, did you hear about whatever breach? And I can be like, no. I mean, there's so much going on, you can't hear about everything. So I use these tools to, to kind of stay up to date. So uh, we can select like payment card fraud and 2017. We'll come down here and we'll hit search those data breaches. And nothing yet in 2017 that they have in their database. Let's try something different here. Let's try hacking or malware. So looks like uh, there are some breaches here. So here's the first one. Date made public, April 26th. So just this last week. I didn't hear about this until now. It's Chipotle Mexican Grill. Now it looks like they were hacked. We don't know how many records, what kind of records. Um, but it says popular Mexican food chain Chipotle is warning customers about a data breach. The company says it recently found unauthorized activity on a, on a network used for payment processing in its restaurants. That's bad news when it is on your, uh, anything to do with that payment. Man, whew. they are, uh, investigating. Um, they are focusing on payment card transactions made in restaurants between March 24th and April 18th. I don't think I've eaten at Chipotle in between those dates. I'm going to have to go back and check. But uh, they will get a hold of you, likely. And the next one down, Behavioral Health Center in Bangor, Maine. 4,229 records. Uh, health and Human Services uh, laptop theft. That's always comforting. Usually it's the federal government that uses uh, loses laptops. Uh, fashion Fantasy Game in New York. Campbell Union High School District in California, Northrop. That's uh, that should be uh, yeah. So you know, don't get crazy, freaked out about these things. But it's definitely interesting when you start digging into these data breaches. You know what all is going on. Uh, there was a school. Uh, close to uh, where we're at over in Pekin, Illinois. Pekin High School got ransomware. Apparently they didn't pay uh, the fine that I think, or the uh, the ransom, I think it was around $30,000, but uh, they, they apparently are restoring from backup or restored from backup. And it's, it's funny to me to read some of the uh, local newspaper article, the online comments. Some people just go way overboard. They don't understand what ransomware is, and and so it's it's kind of fun to check that out. Here's uh, six con 
Intercontinental Hotels, Intercontinental Hotels groups. I think uh, we talked about that one last week. Neiman Marcus, Jack Anthony Industries, Finger Hut. Remember the Finger Hut catalogs? Those things were fantastic. Alamo Capital, Schoolzilla. The list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. So check it out. I'll uh, I'll put a link over there to that to that website. Then the last thing I'm going to talk about tonight on Security Saturday. Uh, people have been bringing it up and bringing it up, bringing it up, and I do run uh, Kali Linux. I run it on. I've got it on Raspberry Pis. I've got it on two laptops that I carry when I go out to customer sites. I have it in a VM that I use uh, in my regular day job. I have it in a VM here at home. So um, I'll put a link to Cali. We're going to do some Cali videos, but I'm not going to uh, really get crazy with it because there are hundreds and thousands of videos on YouTube and I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Now things that I do specifically and the way that I do it, I am going to create videos on that because we've all got our own special approaches to some of these things and I'd like to show you how I use some of the tools in the toolkit that may not, I may use them for other purposes than, than what you, you would think. So uh, we will get into that. So we will do some Cali videos, but they will not be like, if you go to YouTube, if you go up to the top there and you search for for Cali, you are going to get tens of thousands of videos, I'm sure, uh, or Backtrack Linux, because this is uh, kind of after Backtrack. So I will, uh, I'll put a link out there, download it in a VM, they provide the VM, play around with it, you know, if you decide it's not for you, that's cool, but I will tell you it is one of, it's probably the biggest software um, that I use besides uh, Nessus. So, but I, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up for tonight. I appreciate everybody hanging in there. I know this format's a little, little new. Uh, this is not how it's going to be next week. This is just temporary. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please continue contacting me. Please continue using those affiliate links. Um, if you want to be notified when I release a new video, hit that little bell that's floating around down there. And we will see you in the next video.